Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS, the inventor of the CTKS method, the world's most powerful system for detecting smart money buy and sell levels. Today, we're going to explore crypto interest and its impact on adoption and price and market analysis via the CTKS method. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back CTKS family. Please smash that like button and subscribe, making sure to turn on notifications to know where smart money is buying and selling. Let's run the numbers. There's been enormous institutional interest in the crypto market in the past week. And we can see that Bitcoin's price has come up just a little over 7%. It's leading Ethereum, BNB by a wide margin, XRP by a wide margin, ADA and Bitcoin are nearly neck and neck. Doge just a little bit weaker, as is Solana, and Tron weaker than that. So far, the money is flowing into Bitcoin. Recently, the EDX exchange launched, and it's going to be trading for primary things that they've said are not securities. And this is backed by some of the world's largest fund managers, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. Please keep your eye on these four. And well done to anybody that managed to ride the Bitcoin Cash wave. That certainly came up. Let's have a look through some of the charts with the CTKS method. The indicators for the charts that I'm going to show you are inside the CTKS method service. It seems like a lifetime ago when the SEC went after Binance and Coinbase. What happened next? The crypto market dove down. And then suddenly we had, <laughs> one after the other, Bitcoin ETF, Bitcoin Trust approvals passed by the SEC's desk. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, started the foray. And then it was followed by so many other major participants. And you can see the result. Bitcoin's price and total crypto market cap has been exploding. Smart money is always buying and selling. So let's put on total crypto market capitalization and see where they were selling down. And you can see around this 1.153 trillion, a lot of overhead resistance, but it was pushed down to support around that 1.127 trillion mark. And it's now starting to come up. Pushing through the 1.153 trillion is going to be a little bit difficult. So we may see the market start to consolidate. We always have our three dimensional risk management at play because we know the market rewards synchronization with profits and desynchronization with losses. In the past 24 hours, a lot has happened in Bitcoin. What we saw down here, Spain's largest bank is supporting the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Then over a little, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, or MAS, has introduced a proposal for the common protocol aimed at regulating the use of digital currencies by financial institutions. In other words, crypto is gaining a very strong foothold in traditional finance. Binance has launched a regulated digital asset platform in Kazakhstan. CleanSpark and NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining firm will acquire two facilities in Dalton, Georgia. Then we saw Bitwise officially filing for a 19B4 for its spot Bitcoin ETF. Then Valkyrie updated their Bitcoin fund prospectus, signaling the intention to be listed on the NASDAQ as a spot ETF with the ticket BRRR or BRRRR. The key to now understand where is smart money buying and selling? We can see on Bitcoin's price, which is currently $30,156, there is resistance up around this $31,000 mark. Please keep that in mind. There's another level of resistance around the $31,183 mark. If we see a retracement, there's a smart money support level at 29,241. 
and a stronger one down at 28,959. Actually, there's a bit of a confluence around that area. We wouldn't expect Bitcoin to fall too much more than that 28,965 zone. Looking to the longs and the shorts, the longs have been having a field day with the shorts. The shorts have been very much whacked about the head. This is a pretty large short liquidation that has occurred. Looking at 24-hour liquidations, there's been 228.53 million in 24-hour liquidations across 61,495 positions. And when we look at total liquidations across the past 24 hours, 79% short. What about the past 12 hours? 76% short. Past 4 hours? 54% short and the past hour, ay caramba, it's gone the other way again, 97% short. We can see the shorts have been increasingly liquidated, but always bear in mind it's not just one-sided. The shorts have been liquidating the longs, but not by much. I'd like you to notice something in Bitcoin structure. Just notice this particular pattern playing out. We're going to have a look at Ethereum next. Please let me know in the comments, do you see any structural difference between the strength of Bitcoin and the strength of Ethereum? We know that the total crypto market is coming up to a level of resistance. It has also struck a level of support. This is very encouraging what we see in Ethereum's price action right now. Let's look towards where smart money is buying and selling. Ethereum is currently 1895. You can see that 1872 as well as 1879 and 1886 are all support levels for Ethereum. What Ethereum needs to get across is this $1900 level. Once it gets above that, it's looking really, really good. These smart money buy and sell levels are formed through CTKS method standard certification. And you can get this and 25 other indicators by joining up to the CTKS method service at ctksmethod.org. Knowing where smart money is buying and selling is incredibly important. If you're getting in when smart money is just literally there about to push it down, that's not such a good time to get in. But if price is well supported, that's a pretty good time. You've timed it well. So let's have a look at Matic, which is a community request. What we can see in Matic's price, which is currently 672 which means 0.672. We've got some smart money buy areas at 658 and also a stronger one at 654. We have another support level at around that 635 level. Matic is being well supported by price structure. Let's have a look at Ada Cardano and see where the smart money is buying and selling. We can see that Ada's current price at around that 2880 is coming up to some fairly substantial smart money sell levels one at 2900 and a much heavier one up just a little bit further at that 2950 mark there is support at the 2760 mark and also 2641 and just down a little bit lower at the 2611 what happens traditionally in markets People don't look to where smart money is buying and selling. They just say, oh, it's cleared initial resistance over here somewhere because they look at recent indicative price. The CTKS method is completely unlike that. It marks up all of price history. What does this mean for ADA? It means that we expect ADA's price to either consolidate along this 2900 mark or be rejected by it. And you can get this indicator to pop on your hot little charts yourselves. The Greatest Gainers Top 100, Pepe, Pepe, Bitcoin Cash, Flow, Conflux, Render, Neo, BSV, Phantom and Stacks. Just to let you know, because Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin have been approved by the EDX exchange, they're going to be marked up as tier 3 charts and maintained. So that means you'll get two more indicators. 
Looking at the greatest losers, top 100, there's really not many. Rocket Pool has done well. Ton, and then we get into stable coins and gold. Turning to the main markets, we can see that semiconductors got whacked. We can also see that energy did quite well. The standout at the moment is Bitcoin, and you can see that blue line behind all the charts. That is Bitcoin's price momentum, with so many institutional players coming in and legitimizing crypto, and we always knew this would happen. Crypto is back on people's radars. We can see that the dollar is showing weakness. Yields are starting to retrace, and it looks like bonds may actually break out. Gold doesn't look really happy at the moment. We can see oil is coming up. The VIX is decreasing, and we can also notice junk bonds are decreasing as well. When we look at the S&P and the S&P 500 futures, we can see we've been in a downtrend. Without the CTKS method, you would not understand why the S&P 500 has been rejected from this area. But let's just turn the indicator on and see what we see. We can see that the S&P 500 was closing out at 43.65. What actually occurred here? The S&P 500 came up to some fairly strong smart money sell levels at 44.35, little bit above that, 44.39, and there was another one above that at 44.51. What happened? If you can't get above, you're going below. You will be caught. And thank you for everybody who reached out and said that raccoon yesterday was really so cute. Definitely. And what do we see? If you can't hold on, those safety nets are all for you. They're capturing price. Look at this brick wall of buying support, smart money buying support between 43.48 and also up to that 43.57 mark. What do we anticipate? We now anticipate that the S&P 500 will find support. Just remember back to ADA. ADA is coming into one of these kind of levels. They're very, very important to understand. And inside the CTKS method service, there are 25 videos in there that explains how the SLs, the Stanfield levels, play out. They're where smart money hangs around. Therefore, when you look at the S&P 500 futures, you can understand what happened around this area. Looking back at the dollar recently, we saw the dollar resume its downtrend. But what actually happened to the DXY, the US Dollar Currency Index, or the Dixie? What happened? Let's throw on the smart money indicator. What we can see, the DXY is currently 10208. We saw, we saw that the DXY failed to hold the 102.59.29 level. What does that mean? There was a fresh air gap below that particular support level when price was just hovering around it. The DXY didn't make it above that 102.73.56 mark. With fresh air, price can move very quickly up or down. In this case, it just collapsed down. And then there were some safety nets around that 102.2081 mark and also the 102.1759. But what actually stopped it, what slowed the dollar's descent down, was this smart money buy area around that 102.060 mark. The more of these particular safety nets and the tighter they're clustered together, the more effective they are at stopping price from decaying. Again, it's good to look back and consider ADA. When you have overhead smart money resistance, you can imagine when the dollar was coming up here, people were saying, ah, oh, just get through that easily. No, it doesn't. That's why we need to be aware of where smart money resistance actually is. And for the DXY, you can get this indicator inside the service. Inside the service and foundation memberships are strictly limited, but they're available. So I would suggest you pop on to the ctksmethod.org before the prices just explode upwards. 
we don't want to make Jerome Powell happy. The DXY is a tier one indicator. Tier one indicators move financial markets. You must know what they're doing, how they interplay with others. To get synchronized in with the market, you must look at at least the tier ones on a daily basis. A lot of people don't think that they trade Forex. They actually do. They just don't know they do. For example, what I'm saying, the DXY, the Euro, the Japanese Yen, these are all very, very important things to look at because they impact different things. For example, gold, for example, Bitcoin. And if you don't track Bitcoin and you're in the crypto market because you say, oh, Bitcoin's so expensive, I can't afford that. Actually, the truth is you can't afford not to look at it. Bitcoin is a tier one chart for a reason. When you think about professionals in any area, be it a sport or be it an academic discipline, professionals always think differently than those who are not professionals. In financial markets, we call non-professionals retail. Professionals look at the market pulse. They understand the tier one, tier two, and tier three charts. Why would they bother going through all of this? Why wouldn't they just pile in on the only the chart that they trade or invest in? That's because they've done that in the past and retail thinking doesn't work inside financial markets. What professionals do, they get the market pulse, they look at all the different tiers, tier 1, 2 and 3, and then they go to the chart they trade or invest in. What retail does is it only looks at the chart they trade or invest in and it ignores the market's pulse. And when the market goes dead, they just don't understand it's in the process of rolling over. And then they find their investments and trades all go in the wrong direction. Talking about that, professionals also have three-dimensional risk management. Professionals understand that they profit through synchronization and they make losses when they're desynchronized. The fastest way to get desynchronized is only hold one position as to how the market can go. A lot of people are wildly enthusiastic about crypto at the moment and maybe not so wildly enthusiastic about stocks. Therefore, they would say crypto is going up and the stock market is going down. Instead, professionals know the price moves in waves. That's rule four. And as price is moving in a wave in any 24 hour period, price can go up or down or neutral within that period. Professionals know that because price moves in waves and the markets only pay for synchronization, they must be synchronized. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about synchronization. Likely synchronization inside the stock market. We could get some negative price momentum, but we've got a lot of smart money buy areas. In all probability, we're going to technically bounce and potentially follow through on that bounce. We also know that when we look at total crypto market cap, we're getting into some serious levels of smart money sell activity. Those serious levels have already slowed down price advances. If we get through them, that's fantastic. But as smart money, we have our three dimensional thinking. We're paying very close attention to this at the moment. A favorite institutional game is to pump price up, just call in retail and then sell down. You must be aware that when you trade or invest, you're actually trading and investing against market expectations. This is all very much a part of the learning concept through positive excellence. Having humility and patience is also really important when it comes to trading and investing, as is having persistence and commitment. As price is always moving up and down in a wave, there are always opportunities to scale in and scale out. There's a raft of new indicators coming, for example, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. If you'd like to pop across to ctksmethod.org, just for this incredible price of $39 per month, you get a foundation membership and all of the indicators of Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3. The CTKS Method service is all about smart money, buy and sell levels and those indicators that you can overlay on your own charts. 
However, the CTKS Masterclass is all about nearly four decades of financial market knowledge transfer. It's literally impossible to get synchronized if you don't know what you're doing. I'm offering a Ken Stanfield CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship to a member of our community that shows continuous positive excellence and active learning. These scholarships are difficult to get because people who get them must have proven that they are worthy to receive them. They're given out very, very slowly. Financial markets are really turbulent. That's why we must keep a positive, focused attitude. The CTKS Creed is a beautiful way to do that. These are just daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness. If you're going through a light pullback at the moment, please know that our global family's love and healing thoughts are with you. Things do get better over time. But when you're in the middle of a life pullback, things can seem really, really dark. One of the best ways to escape that kind of darkness is to keep really busy. When people go through life pullbacks, probably the last thing on their mind is to spread kindness, empathy and care to be of a greater contribution into society and to the ones they love. And when I mean contribution, I don't mean financially. By focusing on those things, you will find that darkness dissipates much, much more quickly. Global family members of the CTKS community know that I'm not speaking from a theoretical perspective. I've been through some fairly harsh life pullbacks myself. These are strategies that really work. Just think to yourself, you need to gain strength. Don't allow yourself to focus on the weakness. If a doctor says, oh, you're not very well at the moment, focus on the strength of becoming healthier. If you're going through heartbreak, focus on the fact that yes, it's devastating, but at the same time, it's a break up, not a break down. You've learned what doesn't work and you can look for what does. As traders and investors, we must deal with the fact loss is inevitable. Professionals become immune to loss. When I say that, I don't mean heartless or anything of that nature. We just know how to contextualize loss and put it in its own little box. That's why we say we either win or learn and we never blame. It's also incredibly important to stay dedicated and committed. As a community, we act with integrity, loyalty and decency. Why is this? Because that's an intelligent thing to do. Acting without integrity and decency will get you thrown into a fiery pit sooner or later. Just don't go there in the first place. Focusing on your inner peace and outer peace is incredibly important. To do that, you need to drop things that have occurred in the past. You need to forgive. I say, salute it and move on. But that doesn't mean that you don't have strength and boundaries. Strength and boundaries and acting what you need to act on are very important as well. We are by nature a very kind and authentic global family of around 16,000 people. You are literally part of a positive excellence global family. And if you're new, a very warm welcome and you might like to just say hi in the comments. Something else that would be good to talk about. How do you deal with adversity and loss? It's a very important thing and it's a good thing to talk about at this current time when there's a lot of green in the market. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.